I have some few uh, quick comments on the how important to look now differently about how to respond to uh, uh, different sorts of emergencies or crises uh, and how the humanitarian response system uh, now start to engage in this discussion about um, chronic diseases. Uh, one comment that I, I want to raise is about all that interventions from, uh, you know, heat instability for insulin or uh, uh, MI intervention, uh, motivation interviews for uh, among Sir Syrian refugees for, mostly uh, all that interventions are not functioning in a vacuum. There is a lot in the new crises of political determinants. There's a lot of social determinants. There's sort of tension sometimes between you know, refugees and hosting communities. There's a lot of sometimes having like a parallel system, you know, with the national system. A lot of, let's say, um, uh, uh, overlapping research, you know, or fragmented research, and sometimes without any evaluation component when, when coming to, you know, big uh, organizations and, and UN agencies. So there's a sort of complex factors that sometimes need to be considered while thinking about long-term interventions or long-term um, uh, health access uh, uh, when we have such, such a sort of uh, protracted crisis. Um, I would like to open the discussion now for, you know, um, so the lady here and, um, and then you be, yeah. So um, my question leads on almost from your comment there, so Emma King and MSF UK. So how do you address um, questions about sustainability of that level of intervention? Um, so say MSF's not going to be there forever and handing over safely of a project that gives quite a lot of intervention. And how do you address those issues? Uh, so uh, let's start from Beatrice, if you want. And no. Oh. Okay. No problem. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, so yeah, I can start by that. So, uh, of course, that's an issue. But I think that's been if you decide to take the decision of going into non-communicable disease care, as MSF did 15 years ago when it comes to HIV, there was a big controversial debate: Are, are we supposed to do this? Uh, but now we're doing HIV projects when we only, when in the very unstable settings where we can only guarantee maybe being there for six months. And we're, we're looking at, we're filling into a gap of a health need. And even if it's a one year or two year gap, we're still affecting morbidity and mortality. Uh, in terms of, yeah, you wanna fill in? Sure, yeah. no, I, <laughs> I mean, I, I'll speak particularly for the Lebanon context, I guess, because it's a very interesting context. I mean, the country now has, you know, a quarter of the population as, as refugees, so it's really a, quite an overwhelmed country in terms of the, the burden of refugees that it's facing. And we're really implementing a model of care that's very different to the existing system. So of course, there are gonna be significant questions on how to hand over that model of care. Yet the way in which we're doing it is really to try and do something that is more cost-effective and rationalized, utilizing a GP-based model, so that we could hope that by demonstrating a model that works, it's something that we could work with the existing system to see if that could be handed over to be something that is more sustainable in the long run and in this particular context. Just a quick add, so we're working together with the Minister of Health, with their NCD advisors, and, and, and hoping to together develop a new model. Um, yeah. Um. Lady, please here. Yes, please. Hi, uh, Ruby from MSF UK. Uh, my question is for Be Beatrice. Um, uh, thank you for a very exciting talk. It could be a real game changer for our management of diabetes in the field. Um, I wanted to ask how the pharmaceutical companies have reacted to your findings, and if they're going to, if they're planning their own investigations. Uh, I don't think uh, the pharmaceutical companies are already aware of our findings. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a closed it's, meeting. <laughs> it, 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 it's quite new. So the, the last experiment uh, ran uh, this week. <laughs> so <laughs> and uh, we, are, we are currently writing a scientific paper to be published in a peer review uh, 
journal, but uh, it's very early in the process. But uh, at the moment of the study, we, we asked the pharmaceutical companies if they already conducted stability studies on insulin. And uh, it was a total uh, blocus. We, we could not obtain any information from them. So that's why we had to, to, to perform a literature survey and to, to do the whole stability study by ourselves because uh, they were not able to give us any results. If I can intervene here, also I've heard a while ago, I read something about heat instability for measles va vaccines. So there's a lot of discussion sometimes about all that conditions that need it now in a different setting. So uh, yeah, maybe all that will be raised in the, any other comments? No, it's a, it's a different context now. Um, yes, please there. I'm encouraging people in the back, so. Uh, just to, to follow up on that discussion, uh, I think uh, it's good to have the data, but then we have to move to the regulatory issue regarding this to allow us to uh, use the outcomes of this study of stability out of cold chain. As we have seen for vaccines, uh, we need to have that to be authorized to use it on a large scale in country where we work. That's one thing. The other thing is there is a need to standardize the um, the condition on, on which either pharmaceutical company or MSF or ev every uh, other person uh, look at the stability study so we can have clear and unified recommendation for field implementation. Okay, thank you. So, uh, Kiran, so, uh, please, here. Are you happy? No. Can you hear me now? No. I hear you, but not there, back. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Um, so, uh, you know, thanks very much for those presentations. I think just to pick up on something that Fouad was saying, and maybe it's a question mainly for John and Philippa. Um, obviously, um, and you both touched on this in your presentation, there are, there are broader social determinants of health that are at play here in terms of, well, which, which represent to some extent barriers to to change uh, for, for for the patients you're seeing. And uh, I, I noticed that you you made mention of sort of stress and mental health issues and also um, uh, isolation, vulnerability. Um, um, I just wonder, you already you have a sort of multidisciplinary model with counselors, dietitians, and so forth. Are you thinking about uh, more involvement of social workers, for example, mental health officers? Uh, you know, how, how, what would be your optimal team uh, for managing these, these patients? You want to start? Sure. So, in fact, I only presented a small, small component of what we do, and in fact, my our mental health advisor is going to kill me because I left out a key part, which is that we do have integrated mental health care and social workers. In fact, the project initially, um, the initial emergency intervention had mental health as one of the key components, and as time went on and other actors came in, we were able to to hand over some components of that, but then really our team started to say to us again, uh, and it's a very good point, Kieran, I mean, we're seeing this amongst our patients. They're not always ac able to access the care, even though other providers exist, and we want to be able to provide it in-house in a comprehensive way. So in fact, we do have within our team social workers, and they do things like follow up the patients who we think need home care or who need referrals. A big pro um, component of that is referrals to hospital, which is quite problematic there, and our social workers are involved in that. And then we have, we have some psychologists, but also particularly just use of counsellors um, to, to support our patients. Um, so it's, it is very much a multidisciplinary team. We have the, health, the community health care workers, um, so counsellors, and then nurses, doctors, um, and the patient support education counselling nurses as well. John, I mean, yeah. Yeah, and we have a similar right now. We're implementing, we're starting, we're proposing to add mental health uh, to our project and also a mobile home visit unit because when our patients are not able to come to us, and so then we come to them. Um, so we're in the same process of, of adding those activities. And definitely, I mean, in our refugee context in general, we're certainly more and more having mental health as a, as a key component of the very initial intervention. And, and, and when you're looking at patients with these complex medical problems that require a lot of self-management, to enable that self-management, it, it's very difficult if you don't take care of their, you know, their mental and psychosocial concerns that they have as well. 
It actually has an effect on, on, on how they remember the information that comes into them. A patient with depression do not remember the information that you, you provide them at the same rate as... So we are often a patient coming back and saying, I don't remember what we talked about last time. And that has an effect. Yeah, but also, there's, as you mentioned in your presentation, the issues of you know, so un un unemployment, you know, that you cannot mm -hmm. have people from the community, you know, themselves to be with you mm -hmm. and to work with you, and that's another barrier to, mm -hmm. to have, like, to build capacity. To, so, question with that. Yeah, my question is a bit in line with that, but it's about the limits that we face and, and some of the limitations that, that the projects may experience, and then in particular in terms of lifestyle changes, you know, can we imagine an MSF gym at some point? Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> about it. Or, 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 or in terms of referrals, you know, oncology, um, uh, heart operations, you know, where, where do you stop and what, 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 where, where do you think this will lead us as MSF? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think this is the, the core, I think the question that everybody is talking about, should MSF do this? Is this MSF? Is it emergency healthcare? Well, I would say that, yes, uh, but the big question is, and it has to be an operational decision, uh, where does our responsibility end? Uh, are we doing bypass surgery for our patients? There's a need, but are MSF doing it? Or should we advocate for other actors stepping in? There always has to be the link with advocacy. No, I mean, I agree. I think this is a discussion we've started to have, and it's certainly something that our teams face, and every context is a little bit different, and um, certainly a lot of the times we won't provide some of the more complicated or high-level care ourselves, but at least we can facilitate the referral and the access to that care where possible, and that's what we try in Lebanon. We use our social workers in our team to try and see what other um, access is available for things like dialysis, which is one of the big issues there, and certainly admission to hospital and, and uh, more complex care. Um, but I think this is a discussion we'll continue to have in MSF, and as the, the, the sort of changes in terms of the burden of glo global burden of disease and the places in which we intervene come, we're going to have to evolve in that discussion and, and see where our limits take us. We're now looking at you know, cancer management in terms of cervical cancer um, treatment in some of the HIV cohorts. We're looking at things perhaps we never thought we would look at before, and I think we'll continue to evolve with that. I, I have a story here, a quick story. About uh, two years ago, I was like a newly arrival to, to Beirut, Lebanon, and I had a meeting with MSF you know, staff, you know, was a leader at that time, and now he's ex-MSF. So uh, <laughs> I, I presented you know, on NCDs in uh, an emergency, on a chronic emergency. And in the discussion, actually, he was so nice person, because he said that, OK, that's very good, but it's not MSF. So you can say that somewhere else. So, I'm happy now that we are here in MSF, MSF and we are talking uh, the same issue. So at, le at least now we are raising that very important issue. So uh, we have some time for some questions. Yes, please, there. Hi, I'm, I'm Ben Holt, the head of the UK digital team. My question is about how MSF shares innovation and technology around the movement. So for example, I've worked on an SMS patient system in Zimbabwe, which alerts patients to upcoming appointments and reminds them if they've missed them and helps them reschedule it. It's led to the highest ever treatment adherence in that project, and we're now working on the next iteration. The problem I have is then distributing it to other MSF projects where it could be useful. And I'm sure there are other um, similar trials going on. So the question is, how can MSF improve the way it shares its innovation and reduces duplication of efforts? Um, do you want to link on to that? I think we have someone uh, who wants to link on to that question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> someone will answer from the audience. In Geneva. Uh, um, just to help you answer that question, we started uh, last year co organized with OCB a sort of innovation fair where we got the different operational sections together, um, the five operational sections together, and we had a cross cutting uh, uh, participation from operational directors, uh, logistics directors, middle managed medical um, innovation people, and we shared um, the, the innovation projects that are going on within the operational centers as much as we could. Um, we are trying to 
keep that momentum going. There's today, as you can see, I think some of the projects are coming out are presented here today. And we hope, uh, okay, this is a publicity plug, but we hope we are going to hold another of one of these innovation fairs um, this year again. And, uh, and I think that's the space to share these kind of projects, because as you say, there is a lot going on in the movement, and we need to be able to share what's going on and to, um, to help disseminate this throughout the movement. And to just add on on that, we are actually implementing in a reminder system. So we've already been doing it manually on a daily basis, repining our patients with SMSs before the, the day before. And we're contacting them the same day if they missed their appointments, if they didn't come back. So it's very really quick to fault to tracing. But next week, we are implementing an SMS reminder system in our project next week. Uh, so the lady there. Yeah, hi. I'm uh, Inma Gonzalez from OCBA and also from the Information Systems Management Platform. It's a quite a new uh, platform in the movement and also uh, working, cooperating with Maya in, in innovation and also from uh, our perspective, uh, we are starting to uh, see and try to how to identify common projects and common initiatives and try to see how we can start sharing because actually uh, that's the weakest uh, point that we see. We are doing a lot of uh, enormous efforts and small ones that are very successful but not very good at sharing and sometimes even competing internally instead of cooperating. So willing to continue working on that. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So we have online question. Hi there. Sorry, I have a question from MSF Zimbabwe. Um, this is for Emily. Um, how would you envisage adapting Mac to mobile communities? Have you heard the, the question? <laughs> okay, good. Okay, um, thanks Zimbabwe for the question. Um, it's a good question, I honestly don't know. Um, I think you can factor migration and mobile communities into models of care by thinking about the timing of the sessions. So in Southern Africa, there's a lot of migration kind of before December. So you could make sure that patients have this bigger three month supply of drugs to see them over the holiday period. Um, and I think, again, it's also linked to gender as well. So that might be where the previous question came in earlier and thinking about different strategies for maybe male migrants at different times of year compared to female ones. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any, uh, the far back. Hi. Um, thank you very much for all the presentations. Um, it's a bit following on from Emily's presentation. Uh, it, it's a comment and a question. So the comment is that, I guess, introducing new health programming, it's always easier in some senses to have a very vertical approach, right? But then the limitations to that is you already have an overburdened primary health care system. And so I, I, I liked Emily's presentation. I like the fact that we're thinking of integrating these new health programmings into other existing health programs and looking through a broader lens of chronic disease. Um, so my question is uh, twofold. One, is there other parts of that care model that you have already thought about that could be integrated? And also, in a wider sense, is there also models that we could look at which you have a fully integrated system of various, not only just chronic diseases, but also other health pro programming aspects within a primary health care system? Um, if we think about the um, experience in Kibera, I mean, it's only the very first year of implementation. Um, so I think, yeah, it's been a good way of integrating the two together. Um, I'm honestly not sure what else we could integrate into that model in general. Um, I think we just need to see how the next year goes and then think further about it. Uh, we have time for one more question before closing. Kiran again. Okay, thank you. So I know I've already had my one question, so thanks for the second. Um, it was to pick up on what Arian said that, uh, you know, where are we going to put the limits in in terms of NCD programming? And I think it's, it's sort of a remark that I think that here we see, we've heard about uh, three very different models of looking at how we can deliver NCD care, and already we can see that 
delivering NCD care is very intensive, requires a lot of treatment support, and potentially could be expensive. So it, it's just a, a remark that I think, how are we going to set the limits? It's through, it's through conducting these well-controlled pilots in very specific settings, and it's through, it's, it's not applying this, these models absolutely everywhere now, because we really need to learn from these sort of flagship projects. And so it's really just a, a request also to the, to, to, to the, to the panel um, who've been involved in these projects to, 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 to rigorously evaluate these projects and really draw all the lessons we can learn from this, because this is going to help us in limit setting, and this is going to help us define where we can have added value at a, at a, at a, at a, at a cost that we can, we can accept. Yeah. Any comment, Philippe? No, or? but I, I completely agree. I think that that is the key thing: is we need to really be maximising, um, you know, what we can capitalise from these, and then we, we we need more examples as well. So they, they, these are very specific contexts, and we need to learn. We have the very different context of sort of Middle East refugee setting, and then the the stable, um, you know, African slum setting. We're, we're starting to look in other settings, but, but I agree it needs to be done very systematically and really trying from the beginning to make sure we set it up in a way we can learn the lessons. Mm. The emergency context is the big one that I see at the moment, and, and in Ukraine we're being faced with this, with a high burden of NCDs, but we're running mobile clinics, so again, it's a very different setting to the stable clinics that we have in the Middle East, where we don't have access to, we have very limited access to investigative capacity, um, and so we need to see how we can do it even in a much simpler manner again um, with mobile clinics and, and perhaps disruption to care because of conflict. There we're, we are looking at things like telephone follow-up of patients, and we're doing that in Iraq as well with our mobile clinics, so really trying to innovate in many different ways to bring the care to these settings. And can I just add on yeah, yeah, quickly? And I think your point about being systematic is a good one, but also I'd stress the flexibility. And as much as you can have a model such as the MAC or a, group, a support club for people with HIV in South Africa, I think being able to kind of pick and mix in a way and take the bits that work for your own project is definitely the way to do it and not feel scared that, oh, no, I don't want to do this because you've only done it with over 25s or something. I think being flexible is definitely beneficial. I think that, you know, turn us back to the first uh, uh, presentation, the keynote speaking, you know, about the big data and that's how we need more in terms of, you know, better and, and um, uh, new. Uh, which is not always, you know, that we have data now, we start building this data, but still we need to know more about that, uh, how we can do the best and useful intervention. Um, the last word. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, the, the, all the presenters. And I thought it was interesting that we had a, you know, the innovation can sometimes uh, exist in doing in not doing something. So not cold chaining, cold chaining an item, rather than <laughs> rather than uh, inventing new and applying new techniques. Uh, but but I think there was a very interesting. Uh, it's it's going to be a very interesting field for MSF. What I'm proud of is that we're engaging. And we're finding out about our limits rather than being stopped uh, uh, by questions about the limitations that we will inevitably face. So thank you very much for that. And particularly, thank you, Dr. Uh, Fuad, for uh, chairing the session in a very interesting manner. Um, I have an announcement here about the uh, 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 Conflict and Health Journal. They uh, released um, a, a call for paper about NCDs in, in emergence. So please, if you want to have a look here and you have the pressure outside. So thank you very much.